untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a black white super friends planeswalker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Farewell, the new 6 mana rare sweeper from Kamigawa, lets us choose one or more between exiling all artifacts, all creatures, all enchantments and all graveyards. So a ton of great utility from Farewell, especially in a deck that's built around planeswalkers, which are the one card type that we don't exile with Farewell, so it can often be a one-sided sweeper that also cleans up all graveyards. Then looking at the rest of our deck, of course we do need some Planeswalkers for this to work, so we've got the full playset of the Wandering Emperor, the new Planeswalker that can be flashed in and activated right away, can put plus one counters on creatures giving them first strike, can make a 2-2 Samurai token with Vigilance or exile a tapped creature and gain two life, a ton of great utility. Then we also have two copies of Surin the Mirthless, which can be a card draw engine with the plus one, especially if we can reveal some lands that don't cost any life, can make two three flying lifelinking vampire tokens if needed, and I've also used the minus seven a few times to close out the game. Then at five mana we've got two copies of Kaya, not the most synergistic planeswalker with the plus one ability as we don't have a ton of creatures, but do keep in mind that if we exile our creatures with a farewell they will still come back thanks to Kaya, which also counts exile and then the minus three can exile target a non-land permanent, that's the main purpose of Kaya, to come down and exile something, and then provide more value later. And then at six mana we've got two copies of Professor Onyx, which can slowly drain the opponent with Magecraft, the plus one provides card advantage, and the minus three can make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature. Then besides Farewell we also have the full playset of Doomscar as another powerful sweeper that can be foretold to potentially cast it on turn three, great against those white aggressive decks. And then we also have some early blockers with the full playset of Spirited Companion, a 1-1 that draws a card when it enters, and then two copies of Professor of Symbology, a 2-1 that lets us learn when it enters, and we've got our 7-card sideboard and best of one to choose from, with Environmental Sciences to find a land, reduce the memory as removal, Inkling Summoning to make a 2-1 flyer, Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, Double Mascot Exhibition as a potential win condition, and then a Confront to Past to deal with opposing Planeswalkers, or potentially get a Planeswalker back from our grave if we didn't exile it with our own farewell. So these are early creatures that we can put the ghost form counters onto with Kaya, they provide a bit of card advantage when they enter, so we don't feel bad wiping them away with our own sweepers, and they also kind of force the opponent to sometimes overextend into those sweepers in the first place, and they also synergize nicely with the restoration of Iganjo, which on the first chapter lets us search up a planes and put it into our hand, then on chapter 2 we can discard a card, and if we do, we can return a permanent card with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, so we can sometimes cheat a Spirited Companion or Professor of Symbology into play for free, can also put a land into play with it, so it can also kind of ramp us from a potential 5 mana to 6 mana, so we can cast Farewell a turn sooner, and then it also eventually transforms into a 3-4 enchantment creature with Vigilance, that when it attacks or blocks makes a 1-1 spirit token, so a ton of value to be had. In the late game we can even get back some of our lands with it, like Field of Ruin if we've used it, or maybe if the opponent used Field of Ruin we can get back some of our creature lands, so it does have quite a bit of utility even in the late game. And then we've got some instant speed spot removal with the full playset of Vanishing Verse, exiling a monocolored permanent, and then some of the new March cards from Kamigawa with the March of Otherworldly Light, exiling target artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value X or less, and we can also pitch white cards from our hand to pay two extra mana for it. And then March of a Wretched Sorrow deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and we gain X life. So maybe not as versatile as March of Otherworldly Light, but being able to target Planeswalkers is a big deal, and the extra life gain also comes in handy. And then our mana base includes two copies of Field of Ruin, which is one of the main reasons to stick to a two-color control deck, as opposed to dipping into blue for Kaito, for instance. Then we've got some creature lands with Cave of the Frost Dragon and a Hive of the Eye Tyrant, and two copies of Emiria's Call, which we can play as a land, or as a seven mana sorcery making a pair of 4-4 angel tokens. And then we also have the new channel lands with High Ganjo and the Abandoned Mire. And then some dual lands with four pathways, the Shattered Sanctum, two copies of Shine Shadow Snarl, not a card we're expecting to play untapped very often, but it's just an extra dual land to help with the double black on Sorin and all the double white we need. And then some basic lands, three swamps and four planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, missing black mana, but Field of Ruin can eventually 
search it up. Up against the red green. And yeah, it looks like a werewolf deck. Alright, we'll foretell Doomscar and then I'm happy killing two creatures with it. Opponent's just gonna hit us for three. And no follow-up. Alright, they're giving us time to develop our mana. So I'm not gonna Doomscar now. And then we can feel of Ruin to get our black sorted. There's no creature lands to worry about. Alright, Stormseeker can potentially enable pack tactics for them to draw a card. Now if I Field of Rune, I can get a Swamp and cast March of Wretched Sorrow, although I would have to pitch two black cards from my hand in order to cast it. So is that worth it? It may not be, so I'll just take the hit here. Stormseeker targets itself. And our opponent draws a card. So now the Doom's card doesn't feel too bad for them. And get our black mana. Alright, Professor could get environmental sciences, but I think we're forced to wipe the board here. Pack leader into a four drop. It's gonna be a loner. Still no land. So the loner says when it is dealt damage deals that much damage any target, so we probably don't want to target it with March of Wretched Sorrow. But we can take out Pack Leader now, hit it for two, or we can play Professor, get environmental sciences, could even Professor discard and draw because we really want to draw land now. So maybe we'll give that a shot. Learn. And then just discard. What do we discard? Could be another professor, although that can find environmental sciences. Could be Professor Onyx, which is pretty far away. Sure. All right, still nothing. That's unfortunate. A ranger class we certainly want to exile with Vanishing Verse at some points. Opponent levels up. So they can put a counter on Ascendant Pack Leader. Rebuke kills Professor. And then hopefully they put the counter on Pack Leader so we can kill it with March. Alright, so let's March. Deal two damage, and then what to discard here. Vanishing Verse wants to deal with Ranger class, also good answer to the loner. Soren might be a little awkward here since it doesn't really deal with the board all that well. And uh, double black is also gonna be hard to cast. Okay, Field of Ruins, good. So now I can go for maybe Professor plus Vanishing Verse Ranger class. And this can get Environmental Sciences. And then we'll wait for them to maybe level up Ranger class and waste a bunch of mana. Alright, so now we'll exile it. And then Professor can trade for the Wolf. And uh, I guess we'll take five from the Loner, most likely. So the Wolf might not attack. And then Vanishing Verse or Kaya could deal with the Loner. All right, does transform to Night Time. So I could double spell with Sciences and Vanishing Verse to flip it back to daytime to make their wolves less scary. I think I can buy that. So let's Sciences get a Swamp. 
and then Vanishing Verse right now, as opposed to... Could have also played Wandering Emperor and just Minus on the loner. But let's keep it daytime. And then we still have a March available, just in case. Ideally, we want to keep Professor around so we can plus Kaya on it. Kami's Flare, that'll work. No modified creature, so we're just taking two here. That's acceptable. And a pack leader, okay. So what's the plan here? I can... Potentially play Emperor and cast a March dealing two to the Wolf token. Could just run out Kaya here. Could also use Iganjo. But then we would still have to pitch something to March to be able to use it. Doesn't seem very useful. So I'm thinking... I don't want to let the opponent attack and enable pack tactics. But what they might do is pump pack leader before attacks, and then I can just cast a big march to kill it, dealing, I guess, if we play Iganjo, uh, 5 damage to it, and then I'll just take the 2 from the wolf token, and take it from there. They'll switch it to nighttime is the big drawback here. Still have the flexibility of playing Emperor to exile a tapped creature and play march, pitching Kaya. But I'm hoping they waste mana pumping pack leader. Could be risky in the face of a Snakeskin Veil, for instance. Alright, opponent pumps Pack Leader. That works. Moves to combat, and then we'll deal 5 to it. Then of the Bugbear we can Field of Ruin. And then we can still play Wandering Emperor. So I think we can pass. Don't think I want to be double spelling here, so it's going to stay nighttime either way. Wait for them to activate then. And then Emperor could just make a token to trade for the wolf. Alright, then is active. And then I don't want it to tap and produce a goblin, so we'll feel over and now. And then I should have a planes left to search up. So we can still play Emperor. Wolf attacks, play Emperor. And a naturalist. Okay. Probably want to hang on to Amiria's Call since we're one land away from casting it. And then for now, probably just uh, Kaya exile the Lord of Olvenwald. A little bit nervous that it's night time. But um, yeah, there's probably no great alternative. So big hasty werewolf could still be scary here, especially like an arsonist would be the worst case scenario. Keep watch for intruders. But probably wasn't worth taking three damage over and waste our Amirius call when we're so close to casting it. Right, it's gonna be Tovalar. Alright, that is a multicolored card so we cannot actually vanishing verse it, but uh, we can cast an Amirius call, which is still pretty good. Kaya can plus. And then we'll plus here as well. Let's see, so this can pump itself for x equals 6, potentially 7. So it's 11. That's gonna hurt. So it's gonna take out my two angels. So I probably want to pump the indestructible samurai at that point. Otherwise, if they weren't pumping, of course, just going with um, Count from Angel makes sense. So yeah, that's the big drawback of it still being nighttime. So they can pump Tovalar for 7. So I'm just gonna triple block. If I only block with Samurai and one Angel, what happens? Then 
This goes up to 11 power, so it's still trample for 4. I guess I don't have to block with both angels. Sure. So this way we're still taking 4 damage down to 4, but we get to keep an extra angel. I guess her opponent also draws a card. That's fine. Okay, so Emperor pluses. Probably keep plusing on the Vigilant Samurai. Kaya can plus as well. And hit for eight. And then a Vanishing Verse available at instant speed. Naturalists, we cannot exile, but Kaya can deal with it. Happy to keep plussing here. Alright, so it was a bit of a sketchy start, but I think we managed to get there. Let's see what our opponent's last draw is. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keeper. Facing white aggro. All right, we've got uh, tools to beat it here. Hope there's no Thalia. Could potentially be annoying early. Although March can still answer it. It's going to be an adversary. So, play Professor to jump in front of adversary. And environmental sciences is kind of the safe choice. Make sure we can keep hitting our land drops. Sometimes it can be correct to get a white card so we can pitch it to March. Gonna be an usher. Okay. So not the most threatening turn. So now could go for Spirited Companion as an extra roadblock, and then we can keep up March, which could deal with the initiate if we really have to. Could see the Wandering Emperor here at 4 mana. Opponent's gonna move to combats. Yeah, if they flash an Emperor, put a counter on Usher, then what's my play gonna be? I can Vanishing verse the Wandering Emperor next turn, play Sciences, and then keep hitting my land drops until we farewell to wipe the board. I think that's okay. Yep. By all means, I could march Exiling Usher, pitching something, but all my cards in hand are pretty good. Kaya's good too. Now, I guess we could, instead of uh, casting Sciences here, go for March, dealing with the Usher instead. It's probably better here. Although we can do that at instant speed. Right, Thalia is going to force the issue, or we can wait to exile Thalia, although we can exile her with the Emperor next turn. So, probably still happy doing this. Another march gives us a lot more flexibility as well. Although marching Thalia would almost tap me out, so 
Yeah, I prefer just passing with the Wandering Emperor available. Adeline resolves. Deal with Thalia and hope to draw an untapped land for farewell. Right, Vanishing Verse still good. So decisions, decisions. Probably want to environmental to get an extra land. Emperor. I could plus to save some life since we're going to wipe the board anyway. And then they might send a creature at Emperor to finish her off. Now there's still Elite Spellbinder to worry about, or another Thalia making Farewell more expensive. So it's not a guarantee that we get to cast it next turn. So we do have quite a few options here. Between Vanishing Verse and March, we could just exile Adeline and then make a 2-2 token, and then I don't even have to Farewell anytime soon. That's reasonable. Or we can plus and see how that works out. Your right, opponent's moving to combat. So, tempted to march here. And then they'll most likely go after the Emperor. But that way we stay at a healthier life total. I still have much to learn. Right, another Thalia. So that's what I was kind of afraid of, but land means we can still farewell. So definitely exile all creatures. Any reason to exile graveyards? Probably not, since we have planeswalkers we can potentially get back. So now our opponent's on nothing, and we still have a pretty good hand, as well as a few creature lands we can use. So we can Kaya start plussing. Yeah, probably no reason not to. So now we can exile two permanents with it. That's a lot for the opponent to fight through. They might have a Fateful Absence, maybe, to destroy Kaya. But then we can uh, still draw a card if they have Emperor. I guess they could make a token. Bona decides not to. They might be keeping an Emperor to exile my creature lands. But uh, Soren can come down and make a Vampire. Keep plussing. You deal with this annoyance. And we've got Vanishing Verse to Exile Cave, which is a white creature. It is the Emperor. So, I think we let them activate it. What happens? They make a token. Next turn, they put a counter on it, activate Cave. It can only Vanishing Verse one thing. And then they probably go for Soren. I have the option of jumping to save it. If I exile Emperor now, they still have a 2-2 token which we can block with a Vampire, and they have a cave they can activate. But the Vampire holds off the token at least. I guess exiling the Emperor is still better. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Companion into Restoration. Can find an extra land. Opponent on a Mono Black Sacrifice deck. And yeah, time for restoration. Farewell, a nice pickup too. Uh, 
and then next turn I can discard Hive since it comes into play tapped anyway with chapter 2. And then we can flash in our Emperor. And then we mostly have to manage the opponent's Planeswalkers since we can deal with creatures pretty easily. Disputes sacrifices Ghast. If we can avoid trading for Eye Twitch and eventually exile it, that's probably better. So we'll pass. And next one we can play Professor Onyx. For opponent play Spider Queen, we've got Vanishing Verse as an answer. Alright, opponent is black white as well. So you could see cards like Wedding Announcements, which we can also clean up with Farewell. Ooh, that's a rough one. Black up Predation to have a look. So we probably want to flash an Emperor then. And then we'll either lose Farewell or Professor Onyx. But if they take Onyx, we can use Abandon Mire to get her back. Doomscar the draw. And our opponent might be sitting on the Meat Hook Massacre, which is a reason to put more counters on the Architect here to put it out of range. And then I'm still not sure what to do with the Abandoned Mire. Doomscar I don't really have to foretell. So let's try this approach. And then probably find to attack with the Samurai here, given that our opponent is going to be able to learn anyway if we're not exiling. Opponent does chump. Gets yeah, necrotic fumes. And yeah, I think I pass with the intent of channeling Abandoned Mire, and then if we draw another land we can play Onyx. Farewell just to exile the treasures didn't seem worth it. But we can wait and see what they do. And if I really need to access Farewell, then uh, we can decline to channel. Field of Rune, sure. So they could Massacre for 5 here. Yep. That works. At least they had to use all their treasure. Snarl, of course, had to be the draw here. So make a Samurai and then get in with Hive. For Over foretelling Doomscar seems fine. Exiling, don't know if it matters, a creature. Still have an active Planeswalker. And now the mana to play Onyx as well. Opponent knows about Farewell, which can also clean up Meat Hook Massacre at some point. So, start by attacking for two. Opponent might be holding a Vanishing Verse to exile Onyx, which makes me less inclined to just run around there, but can still use the plus one at least to get a card out of it. So we're up on the exchange, and then Emperor most likely makes a second token. Tank for two. And 
And then Soren seems like a fine follow-up to provide more cards. Okay. Nothing end of turn. Rite of Oblivion could also sack the Massacre to exile one of my Planeswalkers. But once it's in the graveyard we can prevent a flashback with Farewell exiling it. Another Massacre for two, that's okay. The tokens are more of a distraction than an actual integral part of our game plan. And we get to untap with Onyx, so that's amazing. Find Professor. This can plus. I could make a Vampire token with Sorin, I suppose, and put the counter on it. Or on the Professor, and then Sorin can keep drawing. Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Not a huge concern. Although we could keep a Vanishing Verse to deal with it. So then I would be more tempted to go Sorin, make a Vampire, put counter on it. And uh, I've got plenty of white mana already. Sure, we'll try this approach. Well, the super friends are assembling here. And yeah, it's just too much value for the opponent to overcome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Companion into restoration. Got some interaction here. Get the Snarl out of the way. Opponent blue-white, so shaping up to be a control mirror match. Early on, we just want to hit our land drops, which we're not doing a very good job of. But uh, at least Restoration gets the planes. Could actually wait a turn to play around a Jory Disruption. And then for now, I guess we can foretell Doomscar. Could also keep Doomscar in hand as an extra white spell for March. Don't think that's going to be a problem. Alright, Thirst is a nice one. Could also go for Sora next turn if we think that lines up better. But I don't mind playing around Disruption. The fairy untaps cave for a portable hole, exiling companion. At some point we can get our companion back with farewell. So now I could resolve Sorin. Won't be under any immediate pressure. And then March of Wretched Sorrow can deal with Teferi at a later point. Do I minus, do I plus, is an interesting question. I think I keep plussing for land drops. Although Vampire pressuring Teferi could be useful in combination with March dealing damage to it. Teferi minuses. Step one plus Sorin. Okay, so Nothing on is opponents might fire off a memory deluge end of turn. I could go for, let's say, Spirited Companion and Restoration. I could take out the Fairy with March and then. I can't really do anything else, and it's probably still okay. So we'll put a stop on our own end step, play this, pass. And after they resolve Deluge, I want to kill Teferi. I guess they didn't. So I should have put a stop on upkeep as well, because I was expecting 
an end of turn play there. So now they get to activate the ferry again. And yeah, I guess that resolves. We have March of Otherworldly Light to deal with their creature lane. And then now March for one on Teferi would be enough. Feels pretty bad, but I think we still go for it. This is hardly my worst defeat. Keep plussing. I'll reveal a Kaya. And then I can go for Professor and Environmental Sciences. Could play Restoration of Iganjo. Opponent could also play their own copy of Farewell, of course. I want to keep up at least one mana for March on their cave. They could also have a Hole Breaker Horror, although not this turn. So let's see if I go Professor, Environmental Sciences, get a land. That's reasonable, or I can play Companion if we draw land. I get to play Restoration and keep up March. Otherwise, I'll have to play Mirios Call as a land. Alright, Vanishing Verse. Yeah, let's play Restoration out. It's not ideal, but... Because we had to play around Jory Disruption. Opponent's got the Emperor. They still have a Jory Disruption potentially, so if I go for March, it doesn't necessarily work out. So I'll pass. If they make a token, I can jump to save Sorin, so we can maybe ultimate next turn. Although 13 damage doesn't win the game. Right, opponents got their own march, dealing with companion. We'll see what the uh, emperor decides to do. Strike fast and strike hard. Right, let's protect Soren. And then we've got ample answers to the wandering emperor between vanishing verse and Kaya. But there's a disruption as expected. Your transgression has not gone unnoticed. And a revelry. Okay. So we can discard something, like this professor to play it for free. And what do we want to learn? Let's see, we have Couple planeswalkers, so confront the pasts could be okay. Can also deal with the wandering emperor potentially. Although probably want to develop Kaya, so we can go Kaya plus vanishing verse this turn. Leaves the door open for Cave of the Frost Dragon to attack. Although we could keep up vanishing verse, although that then potentially runs into a counter spell. Could just get the powerful option in Mascot Exhibition, which requires a sweeper which no one has had to cast so far. Yeah, let's get uh, an exhibition. And then Soren probably keeps plussing still. Reveal. Play Kaya. And then I probably vanishing verse the token now. Or we can wait. If they counter vanishing verse on the token, most they can do is kill Kaya or knock a few points off Sorin, which is fine by me. Just wanted to see if they animated cave. Alright, we'll try and protect Kaya.
And then now Kaya can plus on the Architect, perhaps. Soren keeps plussing. And then don't really want to play Mascot Exhibition when uh, opponent might be holding a board wipe. Could play Companion, just to add a little bit of pressure. And then keep up Vanishing Verse and Cave. Seems fine. I'm hesitant to attack with Professor. If they animate Cave, I can Vanishing Verse it. But don't want to lose my Insta Speed interaction for a Holebreaker Horror potentially. So I'm just going to sit back. They might have another Emperor as well. What we don't want to see is like a Memory Deluge for extra cards. Our opponent does nothing. And then can keep on plussing. Happy to reveal a field of rune. And then now it's probably fine to send the team. And if they animate cave, I can use Field of Rune instead. Opponent takes it, so if we can get them to 13, Soren can finish him off. So we'll just pass. Right, there's the hole breaker as expected. Okay, so. We'll let that resolve, and then try and Vanishing Verse it right away. And hope there's no negate. If they just bounce Vanishing Verse with the Holebreaker's ability, we just replay it, so that's fine. Ooh, opponent's got a Test of Talents, that's painful. Not what I was expecting. So now they get to save the Holebreaker. And uh, start bouncing my things. Now Doomscar still deals with the Holebreaker, but if they have more instants, that could get tricky. I guess I'm happy chum blocking with Cave if that's necessary. Maybe that means keeping Soren at 7 loyalty. Opponent fires up their own Cave. Can wait until that attacks to Field of Ruin. Opponent's just going face. They're reconsidering. Okay. So I can chump the hole breaker and then Kaya can minus on it as well. And then probably find to field of ruin too. Now they could still have a spell to bounce Sorin, second main. But we'll find out. Okay, so step one, probably just ultimate Sorin while we can. Okay, then we can exile Holebreaker, and that does it, awesome. So yeah, blue-white control, they weren't able to find their big card draw spells while we had some active Planeswalkers, never cast any sweepers, but that's often how this matchup goes. And you can still potentially pitch some of your board wipes to March to make it more effective. But yeah, Planeswalkers are hard to interact with, and that's what we saw in this matchup, where the blue-white player wasn't really able to get them off the table once they resolved. So yeah, overall, this black-white control deck can hold its own against creature decks, thanks to all the removal and board wipes. 
but also has tools against control with all the planeswalkers providing card advantage and then some of our creatures and creature lands to keep up the pressure. And yeah, like I said in the introduction, we do end up using the minus seven ultimate on Surin to end the game as we're usually interested in the plus one for card draw as opposed to making vampire tokens. And that's exactly what happens. Now there's still some tricky matchups in standard like the Naya runes matchup. I would not necessarily pick black white to be favored, even though we have some instant speed removal to punish runes on creatures and we can keep hallowed haunting in check with our various exile effects. If the opponent can chain together showdown of the skulls, that's kind of the problem card for us because that provides a lot of card advantage, and then at some point we'll be tapped out and the opponent can play a bunch of creatures, give them haste, and potentially kill us out of nowhere. So that's still a scary matchup without any copies of Archon of Emeria, but could of course be addressed in a best of three situation. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.